Hello and welcome to the ninth video in this series making Simple Flappy Robin for Cocos DX version 3 uh, sorry with Cocos DX version 3 for Android so this video then we're going to add the tubes onto the screen unfortunately this video we won't end up seeing anything new on the application because it's the most involved part of the app is the the tubes that float across the screen and the Robin has to avoid um, the way we're going to do this is if you've watched my Objective Seaver um, series which is currently half finished like this one um, you'll notice that I subclassed the CC Cloud class to do the tube class because essentially it's the same with some small differences however I'm not going to do this in the C++ version I'm simply going to make a new tube class uh, the reason is is one um, I'm never going to uh, extend the application or use any kind of advantages from subclassing and two to be honest um, I'm sick of typing virtual out and stuff like that and I actually find it harder to read um, in Objective-C you just subclass and you get all of the public methods and everything like that um, in C++ you have to basically type all of the code out again uh, it doesn't really save you anything apart from being able to use polymorphism which we won't be using anyway so we're going to make a new class for the tube now before just before I start with that um, the way the, the tube class is different from the cloud class of course is the cloud class basically we start the clouds off and they essentially scroll across the screen indefinitely they reach their destination which we call in the actions here and when the destination is reached the cloud is set to the right hand side of the screen and start is called and it's set scrolling across the screen again the tubes of course are different um, we will do what's called spawning a tube, which is creating a tube when we need it. We'll set a time interval for them so the gaps are reasonably okay and that will vary slightly randomly. And when we spawn a tube, it'll be set then to move left across the screen. And if the robin avoids it, it'll eventually go off the left hand side of the screen. When it goes off the left hand side of the screen, it basically sits there until a new tube is spawned and what we'll do is check if we've got anything that had already scrolled across the screen and reuse that and then be set moving again so that means when it reaches its destination what we don't do is set its position to the right and call start again we just leave it off the left hand side of the screen that means then we're going to need to know some different things about the tube one being whether it's active or inactive or not so that's the first thing we're going to set inside constants.h here. I'm just going to make a bit of space and we'll define a couple of new constants. One called k tube state active. I'll just put naught and I'm going to copy and paste that and call the next one inactive and give it a one. And that then is the states for our tubes. The other thing I want to do with the tube is I want to set um, an inactive X so when the tube isn't active so when it reaches its destination it'll be put very far off to the left hand side of the screen just so so I'm going to say tube uh, inactive X so not an active but an inactive X and we'll say that's going to go 1000 pixels off the left hand side of the screen and just to make sure we're scaled we'll say by get scale X and also multiplied of course by our get scale factor let's copy that from there so that sets up those parameters then for our tube. So now let's create a tube class. So we'll right click and whoops, right click a new file, C class, which we've done many times before, and then just C tube. And now I'm going to do something really bad. I'm going to copy the code for the cloud here and drop it in. And I'm also going to copy the code for the cloud in the implementation file and drop all of that in, and then we'll just make the changes bit by bit. Some of them are fairly dramatic, some of them aren't. So I'll just drop that in below here. And again, I, I guess, you know, a professional programmer watching this will be recalling in horror, um, but it's the quickest way of doing things for the example of the, the, the application. I certainly don't recommend you um, do it in this way normally. I would probably subclass the cloud anyway, despite having to type virtual all over the place, etc, etc. Okay, good. So enough moaning on with the code. So the first thing then up here, we don't have a cloud class, it's a C tube. And that means then we return a tube here and our constructor is a tube here. Instead of set speed and width, width though, I'm going to call this initialize. And I'm sorry if you can hear a lawnmower outside. We'll still keep the start and the stop and everything else. We'll keep the state, but what we'll also have is a boolean and that will be called scored. And you'll see how that works later on. In terms of private, we'll still have our reached destination, our speed, screen width, and our X offset. So that all stays as it is. Just copy the initialize and go into the implementation. So we'll call this initialize. And now we need to, of course, replace C tube with all uh, CC cloud with C tube. 
all over the place like so to make sure everything works. Good, so inside then the reach destination function then, all we're simply going to do here when we've reached our destination is call stop. So we want the tube simply to stop. And now if we think about uh, the tube in terms of it stopping, what we're going to do is set its visibility to be invisible, so it's no longer visible on the screen, so it disappears. And then we're going to set its state to equal at the inactive state, which means I need to obviously include uh, constants. And I also need to include game manager because I'm going to be using the scale factors in one of the constants. So it's c game manager dot h. So the state then will be k tube state inactive like so. So that's what we do when uh, when we stop. And then what we want to do is actually set the position. So we'll say then this and set position and then we set the position to a vec2 and just a comma and the thing that remains uh, constant when we set the finishing position will just be the y we'll keep the same y this um, and it's get position y and then for the x it's the k tube inactive x like so, so that sets it right off when we click uh, stop to the left hand side of the screen, miles away so we don't see it. Sorry my hand hit the microphone there if you just heard a noise. Uh, what have I done with the brackets? Okay, so that's the position set off the left hand side of the screen and then last but not least the tube scored is set to false and scores you'll see in the next video how we'll be using this uh, class variable here. So in terms of the initialization, then we set the speed and the screen width and the X offset exactly as we do for the cloud. We want to set our state equal to K tube state inactive and we want to set our scored equal to false. And again, I suppose really this, this should be private with getters and setters, but for this video series, it keeps the code down a little bit and the speed up a little bit uh, by setting them like I, I simply as public uh, member variables like this. Okay then, so now the last bit is the start, which is slightly different to how the cloud works because we're not simply scrolling. First of all, the, dis the current x we don't need, and the distance will always be the same because the tube will be spawned off to the right hand side of the screen. And it will be spawned at its x offset plus the screen width, and then plus the um, X offset again will be the distance because it will be spawned its X offset off the right hand side of the screen but its distance is to go to the X offset off the left hand side so its total distance is two X offsets and the screen width if you get my meaning it starts just off the right hand side of the screen and scrolls until it's gone off the left hand side of the screen the time is exactly the same the distance divided by the speed and the des destination then is the minus X offset and the get position why? What we do need to do though when it's going to start is set the position. So I'll just copy this line from below here and set the position of the tube. And in this case it's going to be set to its X offset plus the screen width. So off the right hand side of the screen to start. The Y stays the same. And now crucially we need to set the state of the tube now to case tube state active. And now the actions are exactly the same except we need a C tube in here, so we call reach destination when it's finished and the action starts running. So that's actually then the tube class created, very similar to CC Cloud as, as I said, um, but um, with subtle difference that when it reaches destination, stop is called and then it's basically moved right off the left hand side of the screen here, set invisible and waits then with an inactive state to be picked up by the program when it needs its next tube and you'll see how that works in the next video. So I'll just build this and make sure it actually builds and doesn't show me any errors. And we can move on to a couple of more things I want to add on before we finish. A bit of preparation. So in hello world scene.h then, um, I want to add a new vector. And this vector obviously will be called tubes. And what I want to do before I forget is, oh, we need to see tube here and obviously to include C tube up here. We'll go then into the implementation and here where I've got this vector destination inside create cloud. So I'm just going to copy that and go up to the bottom of the initialization just above the create clouds here. And I'm just going to make tubes like so. And then that will be C tube pointer. 
and let's leave this as 30 as well it doesn't really matter um, we're not going to have any problems with performance and space in the application anyway so we'll leave this as 30 so that's that part then uh, created and some more variables that we'll need that are relevant to the tubes then are the first one is float and we'll call this one next spawn time and what this will be this will be telling the application what the time what time needs to elapse in seconds until the next tube is spawned because that will be slightly variable it won't be always the same then we'll have the last spawn time which is simply records when the last tube was spawned so the last spawn time plus the next spawn time if that's greater than the current time then we need to spawn a tube there's something that's a little bit cryptic called last get under y and if you've done the version 2 series you'll know what this is but this is simply if the robin if we had say a pair of tubes then the robin needs to get in the gap that means though they needed to get under the tube coming from the top or if it was just a single tube coming from the top of the screen it needs to get under that tube well, we want to record how low that tube was in terms of its y position at its base because we want to make sure that the next tube we spawn that it's possible for the robin to get over that tube we never spawn the same type of tube twice in a row so if it's one that comes from top to bottom it'll either be a bottom to top or a pair and so on but we want to make sure that it's possible for the robin actually to get up above the following tube if it's had to go really low to get under this so we record always the position the lowest position that the robin needed to go or the minimum to get under the previous tube to make sure the next one is possible otherwise the game will become impossible the other thing we'll record then is the game time that's elapsed as well which we use for timing our spawns and stuff like this and that will be enough for now I'll just hit build to make sure that everything builds okay the builder succeeded then and again there's nothing really to show in the application I can just click run and the screen should be there and we should have what we had at the end of the last video yep everything's as it was and then I'll click stop in the next video then it'll be the most involved video of the series probably we're going to add in the functions and everything that spawn our tubes for us and get them scrolling across the screen so simple stuff simple video um, not much new uh, but the exciting stuff happens then in the next one so thanks very much for watching comments questions criticisms welcome as always on YouTube